This, 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 this is the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertson and Omni Hotels and Resorts. Brought to you by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. It's Miller time. Albertsons and Tom Thumb, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. Choose VA. Veterans get the benefits you've earned. Visit choose.va.gov. And by GEICO. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Now, your hosts, Shannon Gross and Brad Sham. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Cowboys Hour. Thanks. You're welcome, Brad. Thanks, Shannon. You're glad. welcome. Shannon, I'm glad to have you back. Great to be back, Brad. Missed you last week, I man. Missed, I missed you too, man. Well, been everybody's good. We told everybody you were on home health care duties and yep. had folks to look after. and Everybody's good, man. Everybody's been looked after. We, they've been looked after, and, and I'm back. They're on their own now. Outstanding. So. <laughs> okay, great. So, um, obviously, yesterday's game didn't go the way anybody wanted outside of Arizona, but... Uh, you know, our policy here is that we acknowledge that the game happened, uh, we discuss it briefly, and we move on. So we have good news. Shannon Gross is back. That's one bit of good news. And another bit of good news is that we will continue this show, this Cowboys Hour show, for as long as the Cowboys are playing. Until February, Brad. We're, We're doing this till February. Let's go. My calendar Let's is go. cleared. My calendar is cleared. <laughs> Uh, so that's good news. I, I wish I could tell you that we were not going to continue to be virtual, but that's not the case. We are virtual, and that's what we have to do for safety and health. And here's the other bit of good news. Our guest tonight mm. is a young man that I have wanted to have on all year long. I am so excited about this guy. He's got such a great personality, and he's one of the most dynamic players on the team. He's funny. He's charming. He's He's... And he's Canadian. And he is Canadian. And he's Canadian. And he's Neville Gallimore. Hey, Look over the there, show, Neville. Neville. Neville, thanks for being with us, man. We appreciate you. Appreciate you guys for having me. So uh, just so that everyone is caught up, uh, because we are virtual, uh, Shannon and I are in a plexiglass-infested studio. We're in the penalty box. We are in the penalty box uh, in uh, at the Star. And uh, Neville's at home. Uh, on uh, you on your phone? Yes. On your phone, okay. Yes, sir, and, I am. And, yeah, I am. And because we are uh, separated physically, you will hear a slight little delay between Neville's answers and our f- next question. So mm-hmm. we're all just going to work with that and take a deep breath. And um, and so, Neville, uh, here, so we were just talking, I presume, all of you, first, I do want to say welcome to everyone who's joining us on the Cowboys Radio Network, wherever you may be. And if you're streaming on DallasCowboys.com, thank you for that. So, Neville, we are being, we are being looked at by Cowboys Nation all over the, all over the, Intrawebs, so just so you know. Uh, and um, so th- I presume you all know that the Cowboys' regular season finale in Philadelphia is not going to be Sunday. It's going to be Saturday night at 7.15 Central Time. And that word came down late last night. When did you hear it, Shannon Gross? I heard it at the conclusion of the Packers' Vikings game. And that shows me that you are hardcore because you stayed to the conclusion of that game. I found I'm it not unwatchable. Gonna, I'm not going to tell you how much of the game I watched. Yeah. I tuned in after to catch it. So. I, I, I was doing some work <laughs> after the game, and I found it unwatchable, so I turned it off. But I got a text from the Cowboys uh, Vice President of Public Relations, uh, Rich Dalrymple. It says, we're going Saturday. I said, okay. And so when... When we were getting Neville hooked up on the line here, I said, Neville, when did you find out that you were playing Saturday night instead of Sunday? What would you tell me? I told you I found out about a couple hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> and the, this, is, this is the bliss of kind of a day off. So here's the first thing. I, I love how uh, you guys and we, along with you, then have to adjust the calendar. So it, we this feels like Monday night, but it's not anymore. It suddenly became Tuesday, just like that. And so, th- yes. so today was your day off, right? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it was. It was. And that's why you didn't find out till a couple hours ago. And what did you think when you saw that? Did you get like a text or something? 
Uh, yeah, I think the coach hit us up in a, you know, one of the coaches hit us up in a group message and basically let us know that, yeah, I mean, the week's going to start a little bit earlier, so, you know, got to lock in that much faster. And, you know, it's going to be a Saturday night game in Philly. I'm like, we're all like, okay, well, it's time to go to work again, so let's get to it. Uh, did it, Does it take any adjustment for you on that kind of a – usually – when you've got an, an odd week, you know the whole schedule in advance. This is really rare for the, to happen this way. Right. All right. No, no, not really, especially since COVID happened. I feel like we've constantly been having to adjust schedules. So it was kind of like, okay, it's not like, you know, it went from Sunday to having to play, on, I don't know, on, on Thursday or something. Now I'll probably be like, okay, you know, let me make sure I get my routines out the way a lot faster. But, no, we're good. We're golden. And um, when you have a game that is disappointing like yesterday's was, I know you were all disappointed and probably a little surprised because I imagine all of you really went into that game thinking you were going to win. Do you look forward to the next game even more after that? <clears throat> Absolutely. I mean, especially around this time, you know, you try to win every single game. You know, unfortunately, we didn't come out with the win yesterday. But, you know, again, this Saturday we have another opportunity. So that's what we're focused on right now. So I, I would like to uh, go back to that night in Phoenix. And there's nothing good about Phoenix that's been for you so far this year, has there? That's, it was the preseason game in Phoenix when you, uh, when you hurt your elbow, and that turned out to be all but about a month of the season. So um, when did you know that it was going to be that long a rehabilitation, and did you get discouraged at any point through there? I mean, I think probably probably about, you know, two weeks into, you know, recovery, you know, I, you know, when I did the tests and stuff, I realized it was going to be a lot longer. Obviously, as a competitor and a person who loves the game, you know, you want to get back on the field as soon as possible. But, you know, um, the Dallas, you know, the training staff had a plan. And, you know, for me, I just had to make sure I did my best to take advantage of the rehab and, you know, be a good teammate until my time was ready to come back. So. When you came back, uh, you looked like you were even better than you were when you got hurt in preseason. How did you maintain that edge? I mean, just uh, staying locked in and then still finding ways to, to get better. I mean, even when I wasn't able to practice, I was still able to, you know, to get be better, you know, as a D lineman and just become a student of the game. So, you know, and having those guys in that locker room, it made it easy for me to just, you know, stay on top of my work so that when I did come back, there would be no drop-off. What, Neville, you mentioned a while ago when you were hurt being a good teammate, and a lot of you guys on the D-line this year have kind of taken your turn, missing some time. What, what, what does that mean by being a good teammate when you're, when you're not able to be out on the field? How, how, how do you contribute? How do you – you know, cheer your guys on. How do you be a good teammate when you're not able to, to be there on game day? Well, I mean, just, you know, participate in any way possible, you know, whether it be in meetings, um, you know, just being that guy to encourage your, your teammates as they go to war and stuff like that. I mean, understanding that, you know, again, even though I, at the time I couldn't be that there on the field, I could still be that voice to kind of, you know, just be that extra word of encouragement, you know. Encourage me. I was kind of like the hype man, you know, so to speak. So, and I don't have no problem being that, especially for my guy. So it was nothing. You and uh, Demarcus Lawrence came back the same week, as I recall, and it was quite an infusion yes. of uh, energy and strength uh, into the entire defensive team. How how do you think you and D Law together have uh, influenced and maybe changed for the better? the way your defense is playing? I mean, just understand, you know, I guess, you know, the way that we play, you know, it's contagious and it, it's definitely a way to impact. And, you know, having a guy like D-Law that's been dominant for so long, you know, he he, know, he knows what it's like to, you know, overcome adversity and, you know, still come back and, and still be the, the playmaker and the leader that he is. And, and me, this being my first major experience, it was kind of like, you know, looking at him and, and watching how he worked, you know, while he was doing his recovery and, and understanding that, you know, when our time came, that, you know, that we had to be ready and we had to be ready to take that 
that step with the guy. So again, it it, it wasn't hard. It, it wasn't hard at all. And you know, again, when you have a guy like Demarcus, you know, it kind of makes it easier for for you to follow, especially when you got someone that's doing it the right way. Now, um, your defense uh, kind of has been dominant since the two of you came back. And uh, I wonder if, as you get ready to go into these playoffs, uh, do you look in your D-line room and say, this is, this is on us to <clears throat> kind of set the tempo and, and the tone and lead the pace into the playoffs for this team? Yeah, definitely. And I feel like in the trenches, we, we always, you know, take pride in that. And, you know, we understand, like, you know, we're – we're the men up front, and you know it starts with us. So we know to to go as far as we want to go. You know, obviously we, we got to make sure we're on the same page, and, and we got to make sure that we're we're constantly making an impact. So that's the the biggest thing that we're focusing on, and and we're we're attacking every day to make sure that obviously, you know, last week, you know, uh, we we learn from those mistakes, and we try to be that much better. You guys have a lot of. Like charismatic big personalities on the D line, like you guys, you know, Randy and Basham and D Law and you, like on game day, you're all business. You're one hundred percent business. But you guys, you have fun and it's contagious. Talk about the group of guys you have because it just seems like on the field, off the field, y'all are really a tight knit group, and you seem like you just enjoy being around each other. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, again, we, we, we get paid to play, you know, a child's game, right? So, I mean, we definitely take our sport, we take our craft seriously, but we also understand, you know, what what makes it fun is, you know, the way how we play, the way how we play for each other. But, yeah, man, it's a whole bunch of energy. You know, we're, we still we still laugh and crack jokes, but obviously we understand when, when it's time to, you know, handle business, we do that. But, yeah, man, it's a great group of guys. This is probably the most – fun I've had being a part of, you know, a D-line group for as long as I've been playing football because, you know, everybody, we got we got clowns, we got guys that, you know, that can bring that hype and bring that energy when we're a little bit down. And the thing what I love about our group is, man, we, we, it's really it's really hard, you know. You can't really break us because we have each other's backs. And, you know, you got, you got Bash, you got Randy, like you said, you got Carlos, you got D-line, guys like myself that, you know, we – we're, we understand that we're just trying to have a great time and, you know, have fun while we play a sport that we love. So that, that's all it is. Now, when you're talking about uh, the hype guys, I'm going to try to, I'm gonna try to yeah. see who fits into what slot. Mm. I mean, is, is Basham the biggest hype guy? Oh, Mr. Energy. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, the Energizer Bunny, for sure. And and then who? Uh, what did he say after uh, the hype guys and the clowns? Who's the who are the clowns? Are you one of the clowns, Nev? Uh, I, look, I, <laughs> I really crazy, but you know, I, I'm a I, I'm I'm a jokester, man. You know, I, I would say I'm the one that part one on the D line group that you know I, I like to bother the people, you know, get on the guy's skin. But they're my guys, man. You know, and I feel like that's a game. What makes the process fun? But yeah, you know, I clown around. You know, I, I like getting on my my guys' nerves, man. Nothing too crazy, you know. Just to, just enough to be like, hey, man, man, leave me alone. Like it's too early to be playing. You know what I mean? So, now, yeah, I'm that guy. I, you got to stay on your toes with me. Let me ask you what, about one other guy. Then we're going to take a break and uh, and we're going to pull back and take a little bit bigger look. Uh, but um, young young number eleven likes he he like he he'll creep into your room sometimes. Then he'll be over with the linebackers, but yeah. he seems to me just watching him to be like in that group, the in the clown group with you. I mean, I think you and he have some personality similarities, don't you? Just amongst each other. Uh, in that regard, you know, I, I can't even deny that. You know, me, me and Mike could go back and forth with the jokes. He's constantly, we constantly trying to find ways to one up each other. To, you know, to you know, to get everybody laughing and just kind of clown each other. But uh, Micah, he's a, he's a D lineman at heart. That's why he keeps trickling in <laughs> in the D line room. I, I know that for a fact. He, you know, great linebacker, all around player, but he, he's a D lineman at heart. Trust me. Let me tell you, this team is. Uh, uh, 
so much better off having Neville Gallimore on it uh, for all of the enthusiasm and strength and acumen that he brings. And we're looking forward to telling everybody the uh, Neville Gallimore story tonight on the Cowboys Hour. What do you got, Shannon? Brad, when it comes time to shop for tailgate favorites, go to Albertsons and Tom Thumb. Get 10% off your groceries every Dallas Cowboys game day when you wear your Cowboys jersey. Albertsons and Tom Thumb, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. Shannon was he was getting ready for the next segment, Neville. I busted him right there. You, you did. I, I I take one week off the job and I forget yeah. what I'm supposed to do. I got one thing to do, and that's lead, uh, read the library. No, uh, you got you got more than one thing to do. As we're fixing to find <laughs> out, the uh, Miller Lite Cowboys Hour is also brought to you by Lou Casey, the official bootmaker of the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. And we'll be right back with defensive tackle Neville Gallimore after this. Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertsons and Omni Hotels and Resorts. And welcome back to the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Brad Sham and Shannon Gross and our very special guest this week, Cowboys defensive tackle Neville Gallimore, one of my favorites already. Man, I was thinking what a what what a weird start to a career you have had. You come in last year as a rookie and it's COVID and, and there's no real training camp, OTAs, all the regular stuff, can't do any of that. Uh, and now here you are this year, and you it's kind of semi-normal, and then you get hurt in preseason, and, you, and you're and you only able to play a month plus the postseason. That, you must really be looking forward to the rest of your career. Man, you, got, you have racked up the dues. Uh, absolutely, man. And, again, this is just motivation, you know, 
for what I need, obviously, to finish out this season the right way and, and to attack this offseason and come back, you know, way better even than I was when I got back. <laughs> Um, okay, we are now uh, going into the part of the show, Neville, that has become um, one of our very favorites. Shannon's because he invented it, mine because it's just so much fun. So this is the Miller Lite Cowboy Hour. If we were able to be in front of our live audience, Shannon would have a big ice-cold Miller Lite in front of him because he is about to delve into your personal past like Look at Neville, look at Neville's eyebrows. Like uh, <laughs> like few people may have ever done. Shannon, take it away. Neville, this is our Miller Lite moment of the show where we fact check your Wikipedia page, and you tell me along the way whether these things that are on your Wikipedia page are true or false. And as Brad so eloquently pointed out, if we were live in person. I would be taking a swig of Miller Lite every time we get one of these wrong. So, and by the way, that became such a uh, an attractive part of the program that uh, Shannon started to get some things wrong on purpose because it gave him an opportunity to absolutely have a little Miller Lite. Absolutely, wind up one, one show. Right. I think. So I, let's hope you get some stuff wrong. Let's, well, yeah, well let's, but we have no. But, but I have no beer today. So. We're, we're we're down here in the dungeon, so we're yeah. you know, we, we have no Miller Lite. It's not Lite. quite as fun, but we'll try to make it We'll fun have now. virtual Miller Lite. How about that? We will. We will. We'll try not to try not to make it awkward with the little delay. So, I will I will read off a little bit of your page and then I will pause and then f- let you explain whether this part of it is true or false. So, here we go, Neville. It says here you were born January 17th, 1997, and you were a Canadian-American football defensive tackle for the Dallas Cowboys of the National Football League, and you played college football at Oklahoma. How are we doing so far? It's true. It's All true right. So All right. far. No drink for me so far. It says – Gallimore's parents were born and raised in Jamaica, and you originally attended St. Patrick's High School, where you played defensive tackle. Two for two. Two for two. All right. You opted to transfer to the Canadian Prep Academy in Welland, Ontario, which allowed you to travel through the United States and compete against some of the top high school football programs. How are we doing so far? <laughs> Uh, right again. All right. right again. Three for three, man. All right, let's go. <laughs> says you were the first uh, okay. first, first Canadian-born player. This is interesting. The first Canadian-born player to be invited to participate in the U.S. Army All-American Bowl but couldn't suit up because of a knee injury in 2015. Yes. All right. Right again. Brad, you must have written this yourself. Okay, wait, in, hold on in, just in a second. So you, you're, <laughs> your, your folks were from Jamaica, but they went to Canada, and you were born in Ontario, right? Yes, sir. Okay, good. I just wanted to follow the travelogue. All right. I'm a details guy. Okay, yeah. stop me at any point, Brad, because that's the fun part of this segment is we learn about our guests. So we, I've already learned a lot about Neville. Uh, after receiving 30 scholarships, offers from u.s schools you committed to the university of oklahoma to play college football is that true 30 scholarship offers yeah 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 you're right you're right on the money right now man all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna stop down for a second 30 (laughs) scholarship offers one what made you choose oklahoma and who else was who else was in kind of your final decision when it came to college um, I I really was you know I've been a fan of Oklahoma since the ninth grade. There's like a little funny story behind it, but um, my top five, you know, at the time was between Oklahoma, Ohio State, uh, Florida State, I believe, uh, USC or Auburn as well. Uh, so that was along my top five. Nev, I was taking a hard look at ne- Nev. I heard funny story. And I mean, it, it's only funny because um, I was back in. It was ninth grade, and I was it was a summertime, and me and a couple of my best friends were watching uh, the OU ESPN uh, Access. I think that was back when like Ryan Bros and like Kenny Stills 
uh, were there. I think they were either juniors or seniors. And I kind of, me and my friends just spent like that week just watching the ESP and all access as it came out. And my friend, my best friend, we're still, you know, we've been best friends ever since, obviously. He was like, yo, man, like, watch, you're going to get off from Oklahoma. Like, I see you going to Oklahoma. And, you know, we're, we're in Ottawa, Ontario. And I'm like, man, like, that would be cool. But they're not coming all the way out to another country to, for me. You know what I mean? But, I mean, that was, I was more so like, yeah, that would be nice, man. That would be cool. And then you fast forward to, I believe, going to my senior year, they offered me. And I was like, oh, Wow, you see what happens when he, you know, you speak, speak stuff into existence. You know what I mean? But no, nah, that was that's a little cool story about it. That's awesome, man. That is a really cool story. It says uh, it talks a whole lot about your red shirt uh, freshman year, your sophomore year, your junior year. We'll skip to your senior year. It said in 2019 you started 14 games, registered 30 tackles, seven and a half for a loss, four sacks. Two forced fumbles, and you finished your college career with 148 total tackles, 18 for loss, nine sacks, five forced fumbles, and three college football playoff appearances. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah man, you you doing your thing right now? Okay, well, well, <laughs> yeah. man, I am. I would be dying of thirst if we had Miller Light in front of me. There's uh, one more interesting. I feel like I should lie. I feel like. <laughs> no, he's going to take care of that for you. Now. You Don't may not have to because it also says on here that you can sing both the Canadian, Jamaican, and uh, U.S. national anthems simultaneously. Is that true? Well, that is false. <laughs> <laughs> I can say the uh, I mean, Canadian, the Canadian national anthem. Yes, please don't ask me to sing it. But the American anthem, I feel like just because I've heard it so much on Sundays, I, you know, I could I could follow tune in. I would have to get my my parents to sing the the Jamaican national anthem. So tell us, tell us this. So, that was our Miller Lite moment of the show, by the way. Thank you for playing along, Neville. That's always so fun. You, you, Thank you. It was fun. Yeah, man. And then, so, question, how did your family get from Jamaica? What makes you go from Jamaica to, to Canada? How did they wind up there? And then how did you get interested in football? Um, Again, my, my parents, they moved to, to Canada. I had two older brothers, so they moved in with them and then obviously had me as the last child. Um, Both my brothers played basketball, and I just kind of, you know, it's – Football kind of started off, you know, playing in the neighborhood. And then it just got to a point where, you know, I kind of just fell in love with the sport. You know, it's one of those things like, man, you know, when you're able to play a sport and then not get in trouble for, you know, hitting somebody as hard as possible, <laughs> you're getting praised for being physical. You know what I mean? You, you kind of, as, a, as always being like a big kid, you kind of gravitate towards that. Like, I like this sport. Like, okay, you, you, you're being told good job for, you know, playing aggressive and, you know, you know, being fit. So I'm like, yeah, this, I think this is where I need to be at. <laughs> and then I get fell in love with the sport. And then I made my mind up that, you know, I'm going to do whatever I can to, to get the most out of this, out of this sport. So let's see how far I could take it. All right. We're going to take another break and then we're going to find out, uh, among other things from, uh, Neville Gallimore, when he started to, uh, tilt his cap toward the NFL, when he thought that might be, uh, in his future, and uh, we'll get to know the, the personal Neville Gallimore a little bit. And at the Omni Frisco Hotel, you can kick off your stay in style at the official hotel of the Dallas Cowboys, where Neville stays most Saturday nights uh, during home games. Cool off in the elevated pool, savor upscale comfort food and neighborhood services, and enjoy all the dining and entertainment options the star has to offer. Visit omnihotels.com slash Frisco to learn more and turn the next home game into a weekend getaway. And the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour is brought to you in part by Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's, the official pizza of the Dallas Cowboys. We'll be right back with Neville Gallimore.
Daylight Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertsons and Omni Hotels and Resorts. And welcome back, Brad Sham and Shannon Gross, and our special guest this week, Cowboys defensive tackle Neville Gallimore. We're here on the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour on the Cowboys Radio Network and DallasCowboys.com every Monday night through the Cowboys season, however long that lasts. So we've got at least two more shows to do, and hopefully more than that. Uh, so, Neville, the one thing that uh, we did not hear in there, in that biography from Wikipedia that Shannon so diligently researched, mm-hmm. uh, I haven't heard anything about hockey. The depends on what you're asking. <laughs> did, did, am I a fan? Did you pl- am I a fan? I know yes, you're, I know I you're not, not, not really. Okay, I know you're a fan because I, I, you went to a Stars game pretty early in the in their season, did you not? And they gave you a big – was it a Senators? Yeah. Was it the Ottawa Senators? So I walked in with a Senators jersey and – the stars decided they was gonna bless me with a with a stars jersey. So if you remember, I kind of had half and half. So. Yeah, you can be out of way in your heart, but you're you're a Dallasite now, young man. So okay, that's cool. But so did you ever did you ever uh, try to play? You didn't skate at all. Isn't that unusual? No, it's not unusual. Not not for me, man. I I, I was never a good skater. You know, I don't know, like. Probably skate like romantically, you know, glide from side to side, maybe <laughs> if I practice. But I, you know, as far as you know, really getting after, I wasn't a good skater. And, and you know, it takes a lot, man, to play hockey. You got to have a balance. You, you, you playing with this puck, and you, you guys are sliding or skating like 30, 40 miles per hour. I don't know. I'm, I'm boosting, but I, that wasn't me. I, I'm that just was not me. If you want to see me look unathletic. <laughs> Put me on some skates. <laughs> I, I'm just trying. I'm kind of stuck on the image of you gliding romantically from side to side. I'm, I'm going to get off that here in a minute. Uh, um, do you? Uh, yeah, he, now, now you've been here a couple of years. Do you go to many Stars games? Nah, this, that was my first one. But I'll definitely be looking to go to a couple more. But the only, and also the only reason why I'm kind of holding back, you know, surprised as it may sound, I've never even gone, been able to go to a, you know. A, a senator's game, so I'm looking forward for when this COVID stuff kind of calms down over there. I feel like I gotta, it's gotta be balanced. Like I gotta be able to say I went to a few senators games, but I mean, as an opportunity presents itself, I'll definitely go to some more stars game. Man, hockey games are fun. Hockey games are extremely fun to watch. Yeah, especially playoff hockey, man. There's there's very few atmospheres in pro sports that are equivalent to, to playoff hockey. If you weren't if you weren't playing football, what do you think you would be doing? <clears throat> if I like if you tell if I never like picked up the sport or just, you know, if I I don't know. I feel like if I wasn't playing football, I would still be somehow involved in the sport, whether it's, you know, I don't know, being like a, a D line coach or, you know, positions positional stuff I don't know somehow working with people couldn't really tell you off the bat I feel like once you start once I started playing the sport everything that I would want to do would involve the sport in some way I I would like to note that when Shannon was reading your uh, bio from Wikipedia I heard January 17th and I did the math and I'm really (laughs) bad at math but if my math was right, you're fixing to be 25. Hey, you're good, man. Yeah, you're right on the money. <laughs> not, math is great. I'm not that good. I just knew that I heard the 7 and I subtracted from 12. So you are getting ready to have a, a, a play. You're getting ready to have a playoff birthday. I think that's, uh, that's outstanding. Did you play any other sports as a kid? Yeah, I did. I played basketball. I played soccer. Um, I wrestled for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, fun little fun fact. Yeah, you know, I played volleyball in middle school. I mean, don't look at my body now. I wasn't always this, you know, this dense. <laughs> what you know? What an interesting uh, word for you to use, because Zach Martin used that word. <laughs> 
to describe that's, you. That's where I got it from. Is that where that's you got where it? Because we, you know, you're you're playing. Yeah, the word. You're playing so well, and so uh, Zach was talking to some reporters one day, and someone said, "Hey, uh, you know, what do you think of Neville?" And he said, "Well, there is a dense human being right there." Yeah, hey, he told me that, and I remember I was like, I, I told him, I don't know how I feel about that that name. He's like, No, no, I was like, this, you know, you're dense, bro. I'm like, you strong, big, and I'm like, yeah, you know, I just never heard, I've never heard a person being called dense before. I'm like, okay, I'll take it and roll with it. You mentioned earlier that Micah is a is a D lineman at heart. If you could, if you could pick yeah. any offensive lineman that you think is should be a defensive lineman or has a defensive lineman mentality. I think I have I have a guess, Brad. If on, you our, wanna, on this team? On this team, my guess is going to be Wait, don't say it yet. Okay. An offensive lineman on this team yep. who has a defensive lineman's mentality. Or wants to play D line deep down inside. All right, let's see what Neville says. All right. Mine's gonna be let me show you who I think. I'm I gonna go I, All right, go that, ahead. That would be my yeah, I'm kinda yeah. anxious to are we are we thinking uh, big tyrant? Is that what we're thinking? We're not thinking big tyrant. Am I wrong? Well, I wouldn't say you're wrong. I don't think it's right or wrong. But Tyron was not the one that either of us was thinking of, and we are thinking of the same guy. Who? Uh, uh, Zach Connor Williams? I don't I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of curious. I, I'm kind of curious. I said Lyle just because. I think Lyle's got this dirty, mean streak in him, and I think he likes to hit people, you know, on the field, on the field, not off the field. But I think he, I think sometimes he, he's got a little, he likes to play to the whistle and and after the whistle when he can. No, you're right. Not a little, uh, a lot. (laughs) A lot. You you guys are, you guys are right on the money now. I messed up. I don't know why I should have thought of that first, but not nah, LC for sure. For yeah. sure, a D lineman at heart. Have Have you ever gotten chippy with anybody? Whether it's at training camp, we know how sometimes tempers can flare, and we know you guys are all brothers once you're once you're back in the locker room and everything. But have you ever have you ever got a little testy with any of your offensive lineman teammates? Uh, probably, but you know that's just about the nature of the sport. I'm not really a guy that if it does get chippy, I don't really. Entertain. I waste too much energy. I mean, when we're all grinding and competing, you know, to 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 play our Sundays and make the team. I understand, you know, the energy is gonna be high. But I, I mean, as far as you know, the the little extra shoves that you know playing past the whistle. I mean, it happens. I mean, you know, we're all dogs. You know, trying to make the most of the opportunity. But I mean, no, nah, not enough to where you know really fought or stuff happened after practice. And if it and if it did get to that point, I'm pretty sure, you know, we, we killed it pretty quickly. Now, you're, so. you, we're talking about um, L.C. being a guy who likes to play right to and through the whistle. Most of the good teams that I've had a chance to be around have had an offensive lineman or two who have had that kind of, I'm going to say nasty, Just to, and, and I love L.C., but just a little bit of nasty that uh, – um, that kind of Eric Williams was that way. Larry Mark Allen. Colombo, Larry Allen for sure. Mm-hmm. So that I think LC's got some of that. But there's another guy in the offensive line who one of his teammates, I won't say who, just I was asking about this guy, and then I'm going to ask you, Neville, to talk about this this teammate of yours. Uh, and I was saying, what about this guy? <coughs> and uh, and this uh, other offensive lineman said, oh yeah, he's got a little dirt bag in him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and the and the guy was Connor a little dirt bag a little dirt bag in him and the guy was Connor Williams and it surprised me a little bit. Tell me about Connor. <laughs> yeah, he he's a guy that definitely you know I don't know the term dirt bag, but no, nah, he he got some he definitely got some dog. That's a guy who's gonna play like you know balls to the wall. You know, end to the end of the whistle. Whether I feel like we're in pads, whether it's walkthrough, that's a guy where yeah, he wants to take it every time, and and I respect that because you know when you're going up against Connor, you're gonna get his best every time. So he he definitely got that <laughs> that that mean streak to him, you know. And if I feel like if anybody if anybody online that you're gonna get into it apart from LC, I feel like Connor's another one. 
So for you as a young, that's my guy, though. Man. Yeah, oh, I, I understand why. And for you as a young player trying to learn the tricks of playing in the interior, of the defensive line. So you're going up against Connor Williams and Zach Martin a lot. What's that done to help improve you as a football player? It just makes playing, you know, on Sundays, you know, just easier because you know you're getting great competition every single day. You know, you're, you're Zach Martin, you know, seven, eighth time uh, a Pro Bowler, you know, and you when you got to go, when you get a chance to go up against guys like that every day, man, and you, and you know. And you're seeing the results, you know, you know you're putting the work in because, like, again, you're, you're getting, you know, great skill guys who give max effort all the time. So it's basically like, you know, you got to show up because if you don't show up, you get exposed, right? So, I mean, that definitely helps, you know. So you're going up against them. By the time you get to Sunday, it's time to have all the fun because you're going to put in the work against, you know, top-tier guys. We're going to take our final break and be back in just a moment uh, with our special guest, Cowboys defensive tackle Neville Gallimore. And if you want to use what the pros use, Jack Black is the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit getjackblack.com today. And we'll be right back on the Cowboys Hour. Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertsons and Omni Hotels and Resorts. And welcome back to the Cowboys Hour, Brad Sham with Shannon Gross and our very special guest, Cowboys defensive tackle Neville Gallimore, who I wish you uh, could all be around. This infectious personality is just such a huge part of this team. Uh, Be advised the Cowboys game this weekend to finish the regular season is Saturday night in Philadelphia. Saturday night's all right with me. Saturday night. Saturday. <laughs> I like, it. I like Saturday, Saturday night. Saturday. Uh, 
Sorry easy. about that. Easy. Sorry. Easy. Easy. Sorry. easy. Don't make Neville come through the screen now. We don't want to have any of that. So, Nev, I was thinking um, one of the things that's been uh, kind of fun about this team is the different ways and number of people who have gotten into the end zone. Mm. Now, four different defensive <clears throat> linemen. Right now, have have I'm have still scored. waiting on my turn. I'm, I'm still waiting for my saying turn. <laughs> we've had we've had Big Los Carlos Watkins intercepted one, ran it back in New Orleans, and D Law of course had that amazing one against uh, Washington, and then Dorrance Armstrong had the uh, scoop and score in Washington, and then people mm-hmm. forget that although it was not a play on defense, Chauncey Golston, Chauncey Chauncey got the recovery. Of uh, the of the block punt by uh, Corey Clement, so where's where is Neville's turn, and what will you do when you get in the end zone? When's, have you ever scored a touchdown? When I used to play on offense way back in the day when I was uh, when I thought I was going to be a running back. <laughs> um, uh, other than that, now nah, I'm still waiting on my turn. But again, they say you can't go chasing plays, so. Again, we're going to keep grinding and working, and then when I do get that opportunity, I don't know. I, I may do a dance. I may scream. I may get so excited I may pass out for three seconds and somebody may have to fan me out. I don't know because that's a every big man's dream is to score. Every big man's dream is to be in the end zone, man. So, how old? I don't know. It'll be, something. It'll how be old, something. How old were you when you were a running back? Probably when I was like – 13, probably like 11, 13, around that area. Now, how, how big? How, how big were you then as a young adolescent? <clears throat> I was probably like two oh five, maybe. <laughs> That's a little awesome. <laughs> now, now, what are your what are what's your what's your true height and weight today? Not that it's any of our business. Six two three ten. And and, that, and and that's a dense three ten. But let me say that we have seen on this team, <laughs> we've seen on this team that big men can be involved in the offense. Steele caught one. We've seen Connor McGovern. They wanted to throw one to him. He's playing fullback. You know, remember Shannon. William Perry. Oh, yeah, the, the fridge. fridge for the yeah. Chicago Bears. A d- yeah, the fridge. The fridge. The fridge. You remember the fridge, too. And you weren't even around yet. Yeah. The- he was a defensive lineman. Yeah. He was a defensive tackle, and they put him at fullback mm-hmm. some to plow open a hole. Have you talked to Kellen, is what I'm saying, <laughs> Neville. Have you, to- have you told him you used I mean, to be a uh, running back? I put in, you know, I just kind of put it up in the air, you know, like I said, you know, if they need that, you know, somebody dense, you know, to fly <laughs> through the middle, you know, hey, you don't got to look too far, but mind, you know, we got great running backs, man. We got so many guys to get it, but yeah, hey, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind getting into the end zone. What, what, what did you say about uh, how you got to Oklahoma? So it, you, you spoke it into existence, and it, and it came true. Yes. See, I can just All right, so you know again, you just can't goal to go, and we're gonna see the the inverted wishbone. Okay. All right. All right. This is what this is what I want to see. Okay. Okay. I've got I've got the quarterback, uh, and I'm gonna put him under center. Okay. Okay. And I've got Connor McGovern on one side of him, and I've got Neville Gallimore on the other side of him, <laughs> and I got Micah Parsons yeah. at tailback. Micah Parsons yeah. a tailback. Yeah. Okay, how would that be? Wow, wow. Hey, that that is a Hall of Fame <laughs> running back group. That that is an elite. I don't know who's stopping that. I don't know who's stopping that. The the biggest fight might be between uh, the two blocking fullbacks and the tailback to see who's going to actually get the ball. Right. Because I think McGovern and Gallimore would like to have their hands on that football. Uh, so Neville, uh, what what has been? I think we can make a list of the things that you, the obstacles that you've already had to overcome uh, in in less than two 
seasons of professional football between COVID and your injury this year. And so what, what's been the best thing? What, and what has surprised you in a pleasant way about life in the NFL? Like, I did, that's cool. I didn't know that was going to be part of the deal. I mean, you know, first off, you know, when you when you got players that you look up to and you see, you know, performing at a high level on Sundays and then, you know, being in high school to being in college and to, you know, they're your teammates now, <clears throat> I think that's pretty cool. And then I, I feel like, you know, realizing these guys are seeing, you know, kind of like the status that these guys have and then just getting to know them and realizing, you know, they just kind of, they're just like, you know, regular people like me and you. I think that's really cool. And then, you know, just also, I mean, one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to play football in America is just to kind of get that, you know, that feel of what it's like, you know, playing a competitive sport against, you know, great competition and just, you know, the atmosphere, man. Like, it's nothing like, going out on Sundays and to go perform in front of, you know, especially the fan base that, you know, that we got, like the Cowboys Nation and like that that fan base is 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 everything, you know what I mean? So and then even when it's away game, just getting that opportunity is real cool to me. Obviously even with the you know, the COVID and, and being hurt and stuff like that, but just being able to, you know, have my dreams come true and then knowing that I'm still getting better and I'm still able to find ways to play my best football while being in the NFL is awesome to me, man. But, uh, yeah, I'd have to say, again, being around players that you know, so many people look up to and just seeing, like, man, these, these guys are cool, down-to-earth, man, real humble guys that, you know, again, they, they just love the game of football, man. Has there been a guy – or guys that, you know, it sounds like you, you you grew up loving football at a really young age and, and appreciate the history of football. Have there been any guys that you either have played against or, or want to play against that you have looked up to or you've admired or you've always watched them play and, and you're like, man, I really want to be on the same field as them or, or watch them play in person? Is there any, anybody that you've just kind of been like, man, I, this is really kind of a cool moment for me? I mean, really, you know, all, all the all the top D line. I mean, I even start off, you know, obviously in our room, you know, playing alongside like Demarcus Lawrence, Randy Gregory. You know, you you get an opportunity. Well, I, I was hurt. We didn't get a chance to play. Um, actually, no, we did. Sorry, playing against the Rams and scrimmage, and you know, practicing against them. You know, Aaron Donald. You know, seeing guys like Grady Jerry or the Damakun Su. I was a big fan of growing up, and you know, just. You go from again, you watching those guys on the TV to, you know, even though I wasn't playing, but like knowing that, okay, you know, had I not got hurt, I would have had the opportunity you know, to compete against, you know, a guy like that. But yeah, just just seeing these these dominant D line players, but also realizing that, you know, there there's definitely, you know, there's plays that, you know, there's opportunities for me out there to, you know, to 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 match that and to be on the same level. So again, like yeah, I would, I would say that's also those are the guys. Have you uh, looked at any uh, videos of Randy White and Bob Lilly? Pardon me? Have you looked at any videos of Randy White or Bob Lilly? I need to. And I will I will ASAP. I feel like I'm, I'm messing up. I should have been able to tell you yes, but I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I haven't, but I will. Those are the two, uh, two Hall of Fame defensive tackles. Uh, and and the two uh, best in the history of the franchise, and you would find it instructive to go go to YouTube and watch some tape of Randy White and uh, and Bob Lilly because um, you've you uh, you you would have a lot to learn from that. One last question from okay. me. This is kind of off topic a little bit, but is there a story behind your number? <laughs> Well, no, nah, my, my, my number is actually, <laughs> it was 90 I wore it in college, but, you know, obviously the big dog has that. So, you know, I, I just said I just needed a number in the 90s. 96 was kind of a number that I kind of gravitated towards after 90. But no, no, I don't think that there's no real reason. No, no real reason behind it. It's a good choice. It looks, re- it looks you, really good you, on you. Yep, you look like a 96. Hey, uh, thank you, Neville, for nice. taking the time tonight. We just enjoyed the heck out of being with you and love, love watching what you're doing. Neville Gallimore, everybody. 
This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!